Hi, I'm Carl Franklin. The last episode of the .NET show where I talked about the .NET Rocks Maui app was episode 45, which premiered on May 4th, 2023. That was the fourth episode in a series on publishing to the app stores. I published the app as it was and asked my .NET Rocks listeners to take it for a spin and look for bugs. In fact, I left a known bug in the app and offered a cache of prizes to a fan who finds it. Well, not only did the fans find that bug, but a whole host of other little issues. So for this episode, I've created a new repo with an updated version, and I'll discuss all the new features and bug fixes, and I'm going to announce the winner of the bug treasure hunt. And that's all coming right up on the .NET Show. Guys, I've got major, major updates to my mobile podcast client app. So if you go to Maui DNR6 at my GitHub account, this repo has the latest code and it also has all the changes from the last version of the app that I made. So in this version, I addressed a major architectural issue and fixed a few glitches that the previous architecture enabled. Now, if you remember, I offered a prize to the first alert developer who could find a bug that I knew was in there. I left it in there, and it required some major refactoring in order to get it to work. And I'm happy to announce the winner is Alex Popescu from Romania. Alex was the first one to send me an email saying that he found the bug. Now, a lot of other people sent bug reports uh, and I'm, I've fixed most of those bugs as well, but this is the one that I was looking for. So the main issue is that the code for playing audio and keeping the state of it was encapsulated in the code behind file for details razor. This right here. The problem is there can be multiple instances of this page, which can cause multiple episodes to play at the same time. This is the previous version right here. And here's the bug. Let's go to the details of this page, and I'll start playing this. And before it downloads, I'm going to go back and try listening to another one. So it's downloading. Now I'm going to go here. Like to listen to Rocks and now you can hear the first one, right? Easy. But now watch major. what happens. For just $5 a month, you, like to you get to access to a Rocks private RSS ads. feed where all the Easy. shows have. So there you go. That's the problem in a nutshell. But it turns out that this architecture was causing all sorts of problems. So it's clear that I needed to have an architectural solution. Let's look at the old code here. I have an app state service, but it's really not a service. It's a static class. See? And because it's a static class, uh, it doesn't really behave the way I want it to behave. So what I really need is a cascading component, and that's what I made. Cascading app state. And this is a component that has all of the app state stuff in it, but instead of static members, uh, it's a cascading component. So how I implemented this was I went to my main razor, which in a Blazor app is usually app.razor, right? but I wrapped the entire router in a cascading app state. Now, there's also cascading blazard modal because I'm using Chris Sainty's blazard modal. We'll get to that. But because I wrapped that in an app state, now if I go into details, you can see that that is a cascading parameter, and now I have access to app state. So cascading app state has all the stuff for playing, the playlist stuff in it, like everything that I need is right there. All right, let's look at main layout. In main layout, I added a nav menu. Let's run it. So this nav menu right here across the top looks a lot like our website does. And I can navigate to the playlist page and back. Let's see what it looks like on my Android phone. I still have to fix this logo, but I will. So there you go. So this is what it looks like on the Android phone. 
So in the index page, I remove the details button that was at the bottom of every show here. And I replace that with just handling a click on the title. Going back to the Windows version now, because it's easier, the uh, search input now changes on every keystroke. So let's search for Azure, A-Z-U. And as soon as I start typing, uh, it starts filtering the shows, right? So these are the shows that have A-Z-U in them. If I did something like just the letter J, then I get the first 20 shows that contain the letter J. I also have this X right there to clear the search box, and I show the currently playing episode in a button. Here, I'll show you what that looks like. If I start playing this, you like to listen and then go back, no now you can Easy. see currently playing. And if I click it, boom, it shuts up. The name of the method is actually shut up. <laughs> now I also change the next 20 button to show the word more. And if you click it, it says loading, and then it loads the next 20. Now I also added logic to not show the button if there are no more shows available. So let's do this. Let's search for Azure again and go down to the bottom, show more, show more again, show more again. And now you don't see the more button because there are no more episodes that have the word Azure in them. Now I also added a feature that if there's no network access when you press the more button, a dialog pops up saying you're not online. However, if you've already got those shows in the cache, uh, then it will just load them even if you are offline. I added a lot of offline features to this app. All right, now if you search for something that doesn't exist, now it says no episodes match your filter. Another strange bug was that every description ended with a semicolon. That was just me coding a little too zealously. Uh, it was not only here, but in the details page as well. Now, if you're not online and you click on the title to show the details, and you have not downloaded the show details, a dialog pops up saying you are not online. Let's try that. How about this one? Wasm Everywhere with Steve Sanderson. I'm going to disable my network. I'm going to try more. It says I'm offline. And if I go down here, it says I'm offline. Now there was another bug. Search for Geek Out. Because I know that my bio had HTML in it. So now the show description and bios. I'm using the markup string feature of Blazor to uh, show the HTML markup. Now I also added a loading spinner that shows when we're downloading new stuff. There you go. All right, let's talk about playlists. Go to playlists and I removed the inline form for adding and editing a playlist and I replaced it with a modal dialog using Blazored Modal. So I'm going to delete this playlist so we can start over. So here I'll add a playlist, and there you go. Now we've got this nice dialog, and I'll type Azure. Hit OK. Now you might notice that this guy right here doesn't look like it used to look. Let me show it to you on my phone. All right, so I'll go to Playlists. I'm going to add a playlist here because remember it's by device and I'll say Azure and OK. Now let's add another playlist, call it Windows. OK, now look, I replaced that drop down HTML select with a custom component that I built and it's called custom list. So I've got some styles here. I've got a div, items. So it's all HTML and CSS. And then the code behind. 
does everything. So I've defined a custom list item that has a text and a value, which is an object, and a selected Boolean. Then I have my items, which is a list of custom list item. I have a parameter for the maximum height. I have an event callback when an item is selected. See right here, we have select item. And if that item is selected, we deselect all the other items. We select the item, call on item selected, which invokes the event callback. So this little guy here shows what playlist is selected. And you can also clear that selection. And now there is no playlist selected. But when I come into the playlist page, it will automatically select the first one. Now when I go back to index, I get all the stuff about the playlists. Now I made these buttons plus all and minus all instead of add all and remove all but I still have the show playlist button. When I click that, I don't have anything in the playlist, so there's nothing shown. But now the button changes to show all, and this is a play playlist button. So what I would typically do, see my current playlist is Azure right there. What I would typically do is search for Azure and then go down and get all of the shows. So scroll down more. Well, let's just say I want just those. So the first 40. Now if I press plus all, that will add all of the shows that are currently in this search results to the playlist. So now if I go back into playlists, Azure has 40 items in it. I also, if I move down here, made these arrows bigger so that I can, you know, I don't have to fat finger them. If I want to move Azure API Management with Tom Kirkova to the top of the playlist, I do that. Click on that arrow. If I want to edit the name, I just do that again. Whatever. Now, check this out. If I try to add a playlist with the same name, even if it's lowercase, I'm going to get that playlist already exists. If I try to change the name of Windows to Azure, for example, I get the same thing. So a few training wheels there. All right, let's go home and check out the details page. So I moved the audio controls up on the page before the description so you don't have to scroll down. They were under the description before. Now also, links. The links were very close together, making it hard to select with a finger press. So there are still a few gotchas in here, but it's looking a lot better and it's working a lot better. Uh, especially on a phone. So sometime in the near future, I'm going to continue fixing these bugs and I'm going to do a new release to the App Store. And that's all I got for today. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Please visit blazertrain.com and the.netshow.com for more great content.